It's become something of a springtime tradition in Maine. Volunteers fanning out across the state in search of amphibians. Last week on a cold, wet night, 207's Beth McAvoy joined them at the University of New England to see what they could find. When conditions are just right. We look for temperature being about 45, 44 degrees, and we look for uh, some rain event so it's wet. Students and volunteers form a search party. What they're looking for? Wood frogs. I want to see some salamanders. Keepers. Spotted. Four-toed salamanders. The amphibians, they have trouble moving in dry because environments because their skin dries out, they stick to things, and so uh, they need to be wet, and then they need to be warm enough to have their metabolism so they can, they can do it. During a few short weeks in spring, frogs and salamanders migrate in huge numbers from where they've been hibernating since fall. And they'll be in burrows uh, in the ground all winter long. To a place where it's safe to breed. One such creature on the move, this spring people. One of the ones that's called, only the males call. If you look at his throat, he's got this like yellow uh, um, uh, vocal sac. See that skin that's really loose under there? Yeah, you can really pull it out there. So this guy's gonna make his way to the, the ponds over there and start calling with the others and hope that a female comes by. This project is called Big Night Maine. This is its fifth year, and University of New England professor Jeffrey Parmalee helps run it. Amphibians, they can't just breed in a big lake or a river because there's fish there, uh, and for some other reasons. So they look for these ponds that dry up in the summer or they're shallow enough that they freeze to the bottom, so they can't hold fish. They're called vernal pools. And usually they're gonna dry out, so those amphibians have to metamorphose and get out of there before that happens. To reach those vernal pools integral to the survival of their species, amphibians have to cross busy roads, sometimes several times a year. Something like a spotted salamander, it can live over 15 years. And so they'll go year after year to these breeding ponds. One of the biggest threats, cars. Throughout the years, um, their populations have been declining rapidly. Big Night Maine is not just one night, but any spring night with the right conditions. Volunteers help the amphibians they find safely cross the road. Oh, you know what that is? Looks a lot like a worm. This is a pretty rare one. Notice that the tail is constricted here. See that little like constriction? <laughs> Look at the white with the spot, black spots. Oh. Like little flecks of pepper. This is a four-toed salamander. Oh. Yeah, four-toed. He's fine. He's just. Are they pretty common? No, it's pretty rare. Uh, well, we thought they were even rare until we started doing big night. And we kept finding them everywhere, but. He, he's not out here trying to find a breeding pond or anything like that. He's just out because it's a wet night. They're oh, also they're collecting serious. data on what they find. A dead, a dead one, one, unfortunately. Dead or alive. The scientific name is Sudacres crucifer, like crucify, like cross. So it has an X on the back, or that's where it comes from. The Citizen Science Project attracts a wide variety of enthusiastic participants. I love amphibians and animals. People don't always pay attention to them because they're small, and a lot of people find them as like the slimy, gross critters. Nature is so magical and special, and it's so fragile. And uh, I just kind of like enjoying just going out and observing it because when I'm older, might be a little different. To kind of see the community working together on helping these little amphibians cross the road, um, it's really neat. The few years of research has already had an impact. COVID-19 was not a good year for anybody, but the amphibians actually uh, benefited. Well, fewer amphibians died in, in March of 2020, got hit on the road because there was less traffic. The interest in Big Night Maine is growing every year. So I think it's so important to get people out there to see these creatures because they're just absolutely beautiful and they're they're hidden from, from sight until uh, these brief periods. You go out at night and it's just this just gorgeous animal that uh, you know few people really have seen. Even though they live all around you, around your house, you just you don't see them. Professor Parmalee is hoping the project will lead to more habitat protection. The redback salamander, it turns out their mass of all their bodies is greater than all of the birds and mammals combined in a forest in New Hampshire, it was found. Just because these tiny creatures are hard to spot. So you have to really look hard even with this amount of people, but it's, it's tough to kind of see in the dark. Yeah, although they're small, they make a big part of the, the ecosystem. They cycle the nutrients, they eat the bugs, and they, they yeah, so they, they, they make a big deal even though they're not as obvious as the songbirds and the deer. Doesn't mean they aren't worth protecting. Scientists hope the data being collected through Big Night Maine will help measure changes in traffic, climate change, and track individual areas year after year, as well as help generate conservation solutions. We have links and more information about the project 
on our website.